We all want to create amazing websites, but are there some tips or things that you really should consider before you jump into it, especially if it's for a client as well, because they want something pretty magical that's going to convert or keep people enticed or on the website. My first design tip is think about your color palette. If you don't have a palette in mind or a range of colors you're going to go for, you could end up having a very chaotic or messy website. So for instance, if you're going to go with, say, a black color, are you going to like supplement it or complement it with some gray and white colors as well to get a bit of contrast? Or maybe you're going for a bit of a crimson red or a pinky fuchsia red. What are the other colors you're going to put alongside that? Now, color branding is super, super important. And I would recommend you go and look at websites like colorpalettes.net, whereby you can pick one or two colors and you get loads of different images. Why is this important? If you've got an image with bits of blue, 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 and then there's a bit of yellow, you'll notice that the yellow might only be like five or 10% of the entire image. And that's kind of telling you that if your client wants blue and yellow, because that fits their brand or their logo, you might want to advise them and say, well, we'll have quite a lot of blue and other, you know, lighter shades of that. And we'll have yellow, but the yellow is almost like the impact color, maybe for your buttons or for a particular type of headline. But you've got to try and distribute it in a very much of a balanced way. But if you don't have a brand or a color scheme in place, if you create a website that just looks like a rainbow of colors, it might work depending on the type of website you're going for or the look and all of that. But if you're not careful, it will get very messy, especially on a mobile. So keep your color palette in mind. Tip number two is thinking about how you can declutter the website. Are you going to have a website that's very busy with lots of things going on? I'm thinking of like a magazine layout or a news website. You know, there's grids everywhere, smaller squares, bigger squares, affiliate links, icons galore and everything like that. If that's the look you're going for, fine, go with it. But sometimes for someone brand new who's coming into your website, maybe they've not fully invested in it and they're not sure what they're going for. And you're one of 10 tabs that they've got open. Having a very cluttered website could get messy, especially if you're not like a magazine layout. You know, maybe you're talking about the latest PlayStation games or movies or WordPress plugins or anything like that or a blog. It can work for that. But if you're just showcasing your services or a shop, keeping your website quite, quite clean is really good. It's basically decluttering the layout. Now, you don't have we call it white space but that doesn't mean your page has to be white, okay? You could have a yellow page, a black page, or anything like that, but you're thinking about your layout and where things are, and you wanna make it easier for the viewer to kind of navigate and flow down the journey of the page. You want them to get to the call to action buttons. You want them to know that's a call to action button or a shop or a buy now. But if you've got too many items on there, they might not realize the buy now button was there and they might lose interest and go, well, where's the contact form button? So try and appreciate white space and do not over clutter unless it is required for the purpose of the website. Point number three is just as important as your color palette. Have you thought about your fonts? I would strongly recommend you go and look at fontjoy.com. It has a collection of Google fonts and then it allows you to kind of start to think about, well, what is my primary font? What is my secondary or my subheadings, uh, et cetera, font? And what is going to be the font of my body? And do they complement and work well for you? Fontjoy.com, it's free and it generates it for you, but it allows you to stylize or experiment with different types of fonts. Believe me, if you don't get the right font in, it can work against you. So you could go for some really fancy calligraphic font, you know, handwriting style, and you might love it. But when you look at it on a mobile, especially based on the color range you've got, is it easy to read? Is it accessible for anyone out there to understand it? Don't just sort of go, yeah, well, I really like the curliness of this font and I get it, but will someone else get it? And don't just ask your friends and family, okay? Look at other websites, competitors, look at the fonts they're going for. They might have a fancy font for the logo, and maybe the odd area where they got a quote, but I bet they keep their fonts quite traditional and quite easy to read. So please think about your fonts, okay? Because that and your colors 
can really either get someone to stay on the website or it can switch and chuck them off. Point number four is to think about your photos and images on your website. Please don't put grainy images on. Do you know how many times we've worked with people or we've seen websites and they're a consultant or they're offering a service or they're a shop and you can clearly tell that the image has been taken on a mobile phone and it's not even a good quality one. The lighting's not right. Now you have to excuse the fact that not everyone will have perfect lighting or perfect layout. However, if you are gonna take a photo with your phone, Please get it as the best resolution as you can. Make sure you compress and convert it down to WebP to save on file space and the time it takes to render and load. But don't go for images that have been sent from a WhatsApp or a Facebook group because they will be grainy and the quality stands out like a mile on the website, okay? So if you're gonna have photos of people, you know, like profile photos for a team, hey, this is me, this is who I am. This is my co-creator, this is my designer try and get them to be as consistent as possible, which is easier said than done, but make sure the quality isn't like, hey, I need a profile pic, and they go, oh yeah, I'll give you one, and it was like a 10-year-old photo taken off Facebook, you know, you right click and copy the image, because the quality will let you down, okay? So please think about the quality of your images, and I'm not just talking about photos, all right? I'm talking about images across the website, Tip number five kind of flows into tip number two, which was about white space and decluttering and making sure that it's easy to navigate your website. Well, tip five is the navigation. Where is your menu? Can I find it? Do I know where to click? You know, where's the toggle item? And when I do get the menu, is it really busy? I've seen some websites where you have an off canvas pop up, but it is so busy that when I hit a drop down, it starts to like get very messed up. Try and keep it clean, decluttered, but easy for me to jump around the pages. Don't make it a minefield. Please don't do a drop down within a drop down within a drop down within a drop down because that scares me and I don't want to sit around and play with your website anymore. But have a think about your layout, okay? Think about how do I go from page one to five or anywhere else on it. Please don't expect me to go down to your footer either. When someone does that on a website, it switches me off. We like clean websites, okay? But make it easy for me to use your menu and to navigate through your website. Tip number six isn't for everyone, but if you're a shop or you're offering a service, it's all good and well saying, hey, yeah, here's our shop, go and buy our items. But who are you? Why should I trust you? If you're offering a service, what are your credentials? Don't just tell me your qualifications. I hate that. I want to know about your, um, what you've achieved. I want to know about your projects. I want to change, I want to know about where you've changed the world. Have you saved the world? Have you done something? If you're a charity, what are you doing with that money you get? Try and show me what is your brand, your aim, your mission goal. So when you're about us, don't just say, hey, I'm doing this and I'm rocking the world. Try and give me something else to invest and believe in you. Because if I invest and believe in you, then I'm probably more likely to purchase something from you as well. Now, tip number six, like I said, it's not for everyone, but please think about your mission statement. Number seven is about your call to action buttons. Again, don't leave them right at the bottom of your page. I've seen websites do that. What made them think I was going to get to the bottom? Well, I did in that case, but hey, it was a bit of luck. Try and get your call to action button maybe to be in your hero banner or very close to your hero banner so I don't miss it and make it convincing. Don't just say contact me or buy now or get in touch. They're a bit boring. You can still use them, but try and be a bit dynamic and relate it to the purpose of your website. Maybe you're an architect. How about let's get building? Let's get designing. Maybe you're a logo designer. Let's get designing. Let's get that wireframe done. Let's get that image created. Try and make the button, the call to action, feel like you're talking to me, right? Because in real life, if you were like talking to an architect, you know, in a pub or the street, they're not just going to say, yeah, get in touch. They're going to go, yeah, let's get on with the project. Let's build it out. Let's bust a gut. Bust a gut? Maybe not bust a gut you know what I mean there. So make sure you get your call to action button higher up in the page because you want me to click, make the purchase, make the sale, contact you, do something 
but entice me with some lovely juicy words. My precious. Tip number eight, try and be consistent across your website. If page one on your website is blue, don't make page two red unless it fits your brand and it served a purpose because then you're going to have to mix up the colors or whatever like that. Don't go suddenly switching the font unless there is a major reason for that. Maybe you're promoting something special, a one-off product or something. Don't switch the colors out. Don't start switching out the layout in a, in a really messed up way because I might have come to your homepage. I've got five homepages open and I like your homepage. I like the layout. Don't, when, don't then deceive me. When I get to page two and it just looks like, oh, it now looks like, I don't know, a uh, block editor, Gutenberg or whatever. Nothing wrong with Gutenberg, by the way, but it just looks like it was, it looks like a post text image text. There's nothing fancy about it. You know, there's no, the button styling, the layout, everything about it, especially on a mobile. Please do not treat the other pages of your website like an afterthought. Oh, I was going to get onto it at some point in my life. No. Sort it out now, but try and make the look and feel of your website as consistent as possible unless the particular page or the particular promotion or product or whatever you're doing had to be different and you can justify that. Otherwise, keep it consistent. Tip number nine, mobile responsiveness. Come on, don't ignore it. From the get-go, when you're working on your desktop, or maybe you are working from the mobile first and you're going to do the desktop later, but either way, don't avoid it. Don't just create a lovely website. 10 pages, voila, it is amazing. And then you look at the mobile and the font size, the images, the padding. It's cramped. It's cluttered. It just doesn't work. Make sure you get that right. And even if your client's a bit like, oh, I don't care about the mobile. I want it to look amazing on the desktop. You want to grab that client, give them a good shake and say, no, more people are looking at websites on their smartphone and mobiles than ever before. I kind of hate that statement because whenever anyone says than ever before, well, of course they would because there's more people in the world and more of them have a smartphone. So of course there will be more than what there were 10 years ago. But hey, you get the idea, okay? Do not ignore your mobile response enough and get it right. Make it work. And tip number 10, don't make it difficult for someone to contact you. I'm on a website. I like what this person's doing. I want to either buy or contact or use them. But where's the contact form? Oh, it's somewhere like, you know, it's difficult for me to find it. Where's the phone number? Oh, there isn't one. Is there an email address? Um, yeah, but it's like, it looks like a really old email address and I'm not convinced it's going to work. Or I have used it and they haven't come back to me in like three or four days. Make it easy for someone to contact someone on the website, either with a contact form or in your navigation menu, all right? Don't make it a mystery. We're not playing Scooby-Doo here, all right? I want to contact you, so give me the means to contact you. Hey, those were my 10 tips on web design. If you've got any other tips or you disagree or agree, please put it in the comments. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win your life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.